All right guys, welcome back to 10 minute tutorials and today we are going to teach you how to clone a website. Now, why would you want to clone a website? There's multiple reasons. I'm going to show you two different methods. Um, if you guys like these videos, please subscribe, please hit the like button. It helps out tremendously and comment below some of the suggestions you want to see in these 10 minute tutorials. Um, so let's get right into it. Now, why would you want to clone a website? It's pretty simple. You'd want to trick people into thinking it's a real website. So then they enter credentials, credit card numbers, that type of thing. So this is how you can clone a website. And then you'll have to edit some of the HTML code. And for this tutorial, that goes outside the scope. But this will show you how to actually clone a website and host it yourself. So first things first, you need to have Linux. And what we're going to do is we're just going to go check real quick, make sure. So we want to make sure the status of our Apache 2, which is the server we're going to be running. Apache is a web service. And we see that it is green and it is up. So we know it is good to go. So what we can do if we are, since we're in the HTML, see we are in the var www.html. You can see we have index.html. That's going to be your home page. So if we go here, oh, I guess I have some down below. If we go here and we go 127.0.0.1 and and we hit enter, you notice we have a default page. So this is just the default web page, whatever. Well, what we're going to do, if you see this Yahoo page, I went ahead and I right clicked, save page as, and I saved it. And then I named it index1.html and I put it in the same folder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove index.html and it is right protected. I'm still going to remove it. So yes. So we have to sudo remove index.html. Okay. And then from there, I'm going to move index one, which is the one that we copied the Yahoo page. And then I'm going to say, I want it to be named index.html. Uh, permission denied, so we have to do it again. Move index1.html to h whoops to index.html. So index is going to be default the configuration for the web server. So now we'll probably have to restart the web server. Um, we can check before we do it though. So we went ahead and restarted it. We'll give it just a sec. And then I'm going to show you guys another method here. So that is the manual method. The reason you'd want to do a manual method like this is basically because you, if you want to edit the code in any way that you control, so you can have this website and I'm going to show you. So if we go back here, so this is the yahoo.com page, right? So now we're just going to go 127.0.0.1. And okay. See, it's still the default. That's fine. Um, It'll have to be restarted, which is fine. Now, if we if we go ahead and go to applications, so if you guys have never worked with web servers, they do take a second. That's kind of what's happening here. So if we go to home, and we go to here, and we go to var, and then www, and then HTML. And then index.html, if we open that up, yeah, of course, we want to make sure that this is the right, we'll open it with Firefox. And you can see this is what it should look like. Now, one thing you're going to notice, there is no pictures here. That's pretty common. The reason for that is because all those pictures are referenced in other places. I just use Yahoo as an example. You can use whatever you want. Um, but what you do, what you're going to do is go to a place like... Jesus, if I could type. And look at their login page. That has very few pictures. You see what I'm saying? So you're looking for a page like that. Now, I just use Yahoo literally as an example just because. And you can see I hit the refresh and look at look at the web address. It's 127.0.0.1. And boom, we are on Yahoo's page, right? Now, this is all just copied pages. This isn't real, but you can see that it looks real. If someone were to go sign into this, it looks real. So if you copy a website, create your own, and then host it the way I'm hosting it right now, which is just simply going starting an Apache 2 server on your machine, 
you have a fake website. Now the other way I'm gonna show you guys is a pretty common tool. This is the way that um, some people might prefer. The only problem with this tool is you don't edit the code, it does it for you. So let's go ahead and open up social, where's social engineering? Am I missing it? I must be missing it. Um, or it's under something else. Uh, all right. There we go. So social engineering toolkit, if you guys have never used it, really cool tool. It can do a lot more than what I'm showing you. I'm just showing you guys this because this is a cool tool. Now let's go ahead, we'll get rid of that. So you guys can see that now I have a site hosted that I can access, right? Now you, if you're trying to access it from the outside, you're gonna have to mess with some of your port forwarding and your router and you're also gonna have to open up the firewall probably, um, which I don't recommend, but I'm just saying if you want it to be publicly faced, you have a couple more steps. I'm not gonna take you all the way there because I only do this for ethical purposes um, because I want people to see how it's done so they know how to prevent it, how to check for it, that type of thing. So now here we have social engineering attacks. So we hit one. Then you can see we have website attack vectors, hit two. And then you can see credential harvester. So credential harvester is what we're gonna do here. We wanna grab their credentials, credentials right? Now site cloner, look at that. So now the IP address, we're just gonna put, uh, oh, that's for the post back, okay. So we'll just, same address. Enter the URL to clone. We'll say facebook.com, we'll hit enter. Now it may not work because I have a uh, web server already hosting. We'll see what it does here. We can do the same thing and we'll stop this. Yeah, you can't buy and there's something already running on it. Um, so we'll stop. So you can't have two websites running on the same port, obviously, right? Do you want to disable Apache? Yes, and I already did it, so we'll see if it. All right, it says it's good. So Harvester is ready, have victim. Now, if you remember what I just said about web servers, they take a second. So this could still be on the Yahoo page. And you notice, look at even the detail of the little icon here, the little Yahoo. That's what it looks like. And it'll say, it says the IP address, but everything else looks like Yahoo. The favicon there. Okay, so you can see it's not quite loaded yet. It's just not up yet. The site, it takes a while. The site is not up yet, but it will clone the entire site. We'll go ahead and close this and open it back up and see if we can get it, the entire site. But you can see it's seeing all these requests here. Okay, so yeah, it's just the site, if you guys have ever worked with um, web servers, they get like this, I'll pro I'd probably have to restart the box because it doesn't know what to do. But look, watch what happens when I type in my email. So we'll say john at yahoo.com, and then we'll say password, and we'll say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, watch when I hit enter, it should take me to the real Facebook. Don't save. So now I'm actually at Facebook, so they don't know any better. They think that like, okay, whatever. But then look, email, John at Yahoo, password, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, And then they're at the regular Facebook. Now, this will take a little bit to come up. Um, again, it will clone the real site. I just want you guys to understand how to do it. Um, I'm trying to keep this video under 10 minutes, so I'm not going to go back, restart it, and then come back. I just want you guys to see how to do it. Um, Social Engineering Toolkit is pretty common, pretty known for this attack. So you can clone a site, host the site, and then let's say you hosted it instead of facebook.com, it was Facebook with zeros as the O's, right? And then you send someone a phishing email and say, hey, you gotta re-log into facebook.com. If I clicked on it and it loaded that page, I would think it's the real Facebook and I would log in. When I log in, it sends you the credentials. Now this is how, so, uh, this is how spammers basically get your information. So the only reason I showed you the manual method is because if some of you are web developers or things like that out there, you can actually edit the code um, and you can put your own credentials snatch in there or you can do all kinds of stuff. So that's it guys. Hopefully this was useful. That's right under 10 minutes. So thank you guys and I hope you guys have a great day.